my mom was like the warrior woman. She would go and fight for the family, fight for my father, because no, that can't happen. You know, that's not allowed. My godmother, uh, his daughter, was getting a special test to go on to Hunter. Hunter is a school for intelligent young people, right? And she told my mom, she says, you know, my daughter's getting this test. Is your daughter getting the test? And my mom was like, uh-uh. You know, let me go to school and find out why she's not getting the test. So my mother goes. I was her translator. She says, tell the principal that I want to know why you're not getting the test. And he says, tell your mom that the kids in this school, right, the school I'm in, are not bright enough. So they're not getting the test because they'll all fail. So my mom looks at him and she says, look, you son of a bitch. My daughter is intelligent. And I insist that you give her this test. I insist that you give the whole school the test. And I was like, Ma, you speak English? I didn't know that my mom spoke English. That was the first time I understood that everything that we were saying in the house, my mom understood. The mandate my parents gave me was demand your place in the world. And everything I've done has been to assure my place in the world, demand my place in the world, because I know that in doing that, my children will have it better. In doing El Museo del Barrio, we were looking at the Native American experience, the Spanish experience, as well as the African experience. And we did an exhibition focused on Loisa, which is a black area of Puerto Rico. And it was very interesting because when our community came through to see the exhibition, they were like, Eso no es Puerto Rico, that's not Puerto Rico, that's Africa, that's someplace else, but that's not Puerto Rico. There are more blacks, right, in Latin America, the Caribbean, and Central America than there are in the United States. We tend to think that it's all one mass and everybody's doing or achieving in the same manner, and that's not the case. We know that the Native American populations are not faring well. We know that the immigrant populations are not faring well. So that we need to be very cognizant of all of that diversity that makes and comprises the Latino experience. I am an initiate of the Lukumi tradition and popularly called Santeria. I'm a priestess. I initiated in Cuba in 1981. I was born Catholic and my parents claimed to be Catholic. And I understood that if the God and Goddess that I was looking at did not look like me, my mother, my grandmother, my uncle, my father. My children would never feel sacred and never have the power to achieve what we needed to achieve. And I needed to make sure that my children understood that we are perfect, that we came to the world perfect, that our color is perfect, that our hair is perfect, that our nose is perfect, and we don't have to compare ourselves to anyone because we're perfect because we are the God and the goddess. When I was growing up, a brother who was always with my brother became addicted. He was in the street, raggedy one day and so on, and I walked by thinking I was, you know, beyond cute, beyond fabulous, right? And he says, you know, hey sis, and I ignored him. And he went and told my mother, and she says, Jimmy talked to you and you didn't respond? Why didn't you respond? You know, teenager thinking I was all that, you know, so I was like, oh, because he's all dirty and so on and so on. That was the first time my mother smacked me in the face and my mother said, that could be you, that could be your brother, that could be your sister, that could be me. Don't you ever, don't you ever not recognize yourself in somebody else. That's been spiritual. My mama taught me.